Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Today I've got a crazy looking integral here um, and we will be employing Feynman integration as part of the solution. All right, so our first step um, is to make the following substitution. We'll let x equal sine u, therefore dx is equal to cosine u du. And the motivation for that is so that this square root of one minus x squared would just become cosine u. Um, all right, so our integral now transforms into this. Our bounds of integration change, and we're left with this. Next, I just kind of want to simplify that. I'm going to rewrite that 1 plus cosine u over sine u as um, uh, cosecant u plus cotangent u, um, like this. And I'm also going to change our dummy variable back to x. All right, so now it might... Be clear why I, I simplified it like that. I rewrote that natural log function like this because the natural log of cosecant x plus cotangent x is the um, is the antiderivative of negative cosecant x. So now we can use integration by parts. We'll let our u equal this natural log, cosecant x plus cotangent x, giving us du is equal to negative cosecant x dx, and our dv is the rest of it, cosine x over sine squared x plus 1 dx, implying that our v is the arctangent of sine x. All right, so applying the uh, integration by parts formula, we get that our integral is equal to u times v evaluated at the bounds. And by the way, these bounds will, uh, if you let x approach pi over 2 um, on this function right here, it goes to 0. And as does it, it goes to 0 when you plug in 0 also. If you let x go to 0, you'll also get 0. And then we're just left mi with minus the integral over the bounds of um, uh v du. So our i, we've now whittled it down to this. This this is what i is. We started with this and with a substitution and integration by parts, we got it down to this. And this integral I've actually solved on the channel before. I forget what example it is. Um, it was a pretty long time ago, probably over a year ago, but I'm going to go through the process of solving it again. All right, we're going to reparameterize it like this. We're just going to put a t in front of that sine x. So now it's a function of t. Um, the value of that function depends on whatever value of t you plug in. So it is a function of t, which means we can take its derivative. Now, in order to take the derivative, we need to employ the um, uh, Le Le Leibniz rule for uh, differentiation under the integral sign. But first we'll notice that if we evaluate it at the point t is equal to 0, we'll get 0, because 0 times sine x is 0, and then our tangent of 0 is 0. 0 over anything is 0. The integral over any bounds of 0 is just 0. And also, if we plug in 1 for t, we'll just get back this integral. So f of 1 is equal to i. So we have f of 0 equals 0, and f of 1 is equal to our target integral. All right. Now we use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign um, just by taking the partial with respect to t of um, the integrand and leaving the rest of it alone. So this is our f prime of t. This is, this is the derivative of this with respect to t. And now what? Let's let x equal arctangent u. Now that might seem like a strange substitution. Um, a lot of people might um, just kind of default to the Weierstrass substitution here. It's and and you can do that, um, but it, it just makes it needlessly complicated. This is actually a substitution that will get you to the answer a little bit quicker and neater. Um, that is, x is equal to arctangent u, or u is equal to tangent x if you prefer. Um, I just like expressing the substitution in terms of x, that way dx is very easy to find. And by the way, our dx will be 1 over u squared plus 1 du. All right, so now our f prime of t becomes this. We literally just plug x, or arctangent u, 
in for x. All right, so now we have this. All right, well, now let's remember from trigonometry that the sine of arctangent u is equal to u over square root of u squared plus 1. All right, so we'll, we'll uh, rewrite our f prime of t using that. So we have f prime of t is equal to this junk. And that, that seems pretty, pretty nasty. But, I mean, there's, there's some nice simplifications that, that you can do here. And in the end, you'll end up with this. Our f prime of t is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over t squared plus 1 u squared plus 1 du. Uh, and now we have a... Um, an arc tan we, we have an arc tangent integral right here because with um in the u world t plus t squared plus one is just a constant so we have this form we have th this form this is the uh, generic arc tangent integral right here and it's equal to pi over 2ab where our a in this case is t squared plus one and our um or our a squared is the square root of no our a squared is t squared plus one meaning our a is the square root of t squared plus one and our b squared is one meaning our b is one so our f prime of t just it, it simplifies to this okay so now we have a closed form expression for f prime of t but we are not interested in f prime of t we need f of t so we can plug in one and get our target integral. All right, so we can get to f of t by anti-differentiating f prime of t with respect to t. So f of t is equal to pi over 2 times the integral of 1 over t squared plus 1 dt, and that is going to evaluate to pi over 2 natural log square root of t squared plus 1 plus t, and then of course we have our constant of integration. All right, so now let's use the fact that we know f of zero is equal to zero uh, to determine that our c is equal to zero. All right, so we plug in c is equal to zero and we have our closed form expression for uh, f of t. Um, so uh, we know that our i is going to be equal to f of t evaluated at the point t is equal to one. Uh, plugging in t is equal to one gives you this. So in conclusion, that nasty looking integral that we started with is pi natural log of square root of 2 plus 1 over 2. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that and we will see you next time.